good evening to everyone. We just want to welcome each and every one of you to our Sunday evening service. Let us all sound. We just want to sing our song. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord.
presence, Lord. We thank you, Father, that the doors of the church are still open today. Salvation is still available today, Lord Jesus. And Father, dear God, we pray, dear God, that those who have fallen away, those that have been backslidden, Lord, that they will return, or the prodigal sons and daughters will return, Lord Jesus. Their fellowship will be restored, Lord. Father, oh God, for those who have been faithful, for those, Lord Jesus, who have turned neither to the left or the right, we pray for strength, dear God, as we stand tonight, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Father, you said that those who wait upon you, Lord Father, they will mount up with wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not be faint. And we pray for a special anointing tonight, Lord, not only in your house, but truly
opportunity. This evening I'll read a few the scriptures taken from the back of our hymnals number 39 and it's entitled Precious Promises. And it reads tonight, His divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, that which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. I want to thank God for those precious promises that he has given unto us and we can continue to hold on to. This evening we just want to sing all the songs standing on the promises of God and we just want to thank God for his promises that we can stand on, that we can depend upon tonight. Number 266 in your hymnals.
You know, there are so many things I still want to see in all our time to ministry. I can pray, I pray that even for my brothers and sisters, that more of his, his gifts can be distributed. But I know that in our hearts, God is looking at our hearts to distribute that gifts. And I pray that we remain. We remain not just, just remain, but remain faithful. Because he's looking at the heart to distribute gifts there. So tonight I pray for blessing and to your heart to remain. To remain. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
we appreciate him leading in, in worship tonight. God bless you. God bless every one of you. Uh, we just thank you for tuning in to our live broadcast as well. This evening we had such a tremendous time in the house this morning, a powerful anointed service. And we really felt the presence of the Lord. And tonight I want to share with you from the book of Isaiah and uh, chapter 41 and verses 10. So I invite you to turn there for the reading of God's word. Again, it's Isaiah chapter 41 and verses 10. So let's read together God's word. All right. Give you a, a moment again to, to find it. All right. Let's read now. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Praise God. So since some of you just found it, let's read it again. Amen. And join with me in the reading of the word. Let's go again. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. This morning we have heard battles to blessings. The night fear to faith. Come with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are blessed here, the church, because we have had a great time today in the house just worshiping the Lord for 9 a.m. service and tonight we are back here again praise God for the evening service for all the saints that have congregated we bless you dear Lord for all those that are listening online we bless you thank you dear Lord again uh, for using Lord this message dear Lord to speak to our hearts dear Father and to cause us to walk in faith and in victory in Christ's name Amen God bless you may have your seats so there was a passenger in a, a taxi and he leaned over to ask the driver a question and so he gently tapped on the driver's shoulder to get his attention but the driver screamed he lost control of the car nearly hit a bus drove up the curb and stopped just inches from crashing into a store window well, for a few moments, everything was silent in that taxi. Then the driver shakily said to the passenger, Are you okay? I am so sorry, um, but you scared the daylights out of me. So the badly shaking passenger apologized to the driver and said, I didn't realize that a mere tap on the shoulder would startle somebody so badly. The driver said, no, no, I am the one that to be sorry. It's entirely my fault. Because you see, today is my very first day driving a taxi. Because I've been driving a hearse for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Scared to death. Fear. Fear is a terrible thing. Fear brings storm, doesn't it, folks? It does, it does. It is said on the subject of the anatomy of fear that 90% of chronic patients who see today's physicians have one thing common, a common symptom that is their trouble did not start with a cough or with a chest pain or with hypersidity. In 90% of those cases it is found out that the symptom really was fear. Could you just imagine that? What fear can do, what anxiety can do to a person. This is the opinion of a well-known American internist as expressed in a roundtable discussion on psychosomatic medicine. This is also the consensus of a growing body of specialists. Fear of losing a job. Some people are fearful of old age. 
some affair for being exposed. But sooner or later, fear manifests itself in a clinical symptom. Sometimes fear is nothing more than a superficial anxiety. Sometimes it is so deep-seated that the patient himself denies its existence and therefore make the wrongs. Doctor to doctor, physician to physician, some take injections, some hormones, some tranquilizers, some tonics, in an endless search to get some type of release from these symptoms. In our society today, there is a lot of fear. A lot of things that people are afraid of. Now, look at it. What was common just a year or so ago? It was something that you never really thought of. Simple shaking of hands. We greeted each other. It was something that we did without even taking any thought of it. But now today, folks, I tell you, don't be surprised that if you put out your hand to shake somebody else's hand, that they decline that handshake. Why? Simply because now we are living in a world of fear. That's what fear. You see, people are free not only to shake each other's hands, but people are afraid, folks, of many things that are taking place in schools and in the homes. Today, we have, the market has been flooded with all kinds of sanitizers, sanitizing your hands and coming form of different brands and different products, all because, folks, that we are living in a time of, of fear. We are afraid now for our children to go outside and to play with other kids. There are so much of restrictions because of fear. We keep our distances and we are expected to do that, folks. And so we have social distancing. Could you imagine anybody even thinking about this two years ago? But now this is the reality of the situation. We are distancing, distancing ourselves from others at all costs. Because why? Because we are afraid. The world is living in fear. What are we afraid of? We are afraid of diseases. We are afraid of viruses. And these things are all out there. All over the world, it is the same. It is not localized, folks. This is something that is happening throughout the world today. Today we spend money, a lot of money, in buying security systems to protect our expensive possessions. It seems like this world today fears man more than fearing God, folks. And that's the absolute, the absolute truth today. You see, people are doing things, I tell you, because they, they fear man, and they fear a virus, and they fear a disease. But folks, what about fearing God? What about fearing judgment day? What about fearing eternity? What about standing before God to give God an account of your life? Do you fear these things? Worse, do you fear the punishment of an eternal hell? Folks, the reality today is that most people fear a virus rather than going to hell. And that is the truth. I say that very boldly today, folks. Because a virus has compelled us to do things that we have otherwise never have done. Look at, at, at us today. We are hiding behind masks, folks. We are sanitizing. I tell you, I fed up sanitizer. It is incredible. I mean, here is one store, our uh, next store just a few feet away. But you all you just sanitize there. You have done nothing, folks. Uh, yet you have to sanitize over there again. And you keep on sanitizing and keep on sanitizing. My goodness, uh, you see. But folks, uh, 
Why we do all these things? Because we fear it. We fear it. We fear a virus. But folks, we do not fear God. Because we follow all the rules and all the regulations that man has made to keep us safe. But folks, what God has made to keep us safe from going to eternal hell, we don't want it. We don't want it. Folks, we break every law. We make sure we keep the laws so that we will be kept safe physically. But here we have the laws of God to keep us safe spiritually. And what do we do? We break every one of those laws. We break the Ten Commandments and we think nothing about it, folks. We reject what God has provided to clean our hearts and to clean our souls and to wash us from sin. And yet we have not gone for a cleansing. Yet we have not opened up ourselves to our cleansing, but we open our hands every single day, several times a day, to get a physical cleansing because we are afraid of a virus, but we are not afraid of the greatest virus, and that is sin and its punishment. How sad that that is, but that is the truth today. That's what I'm saying. We fear man more than we fear God today. Come on, somebody. We fear breaking the rules that man has set up for us. Whether it be good or whether it be bad or whether it be unnecessary, folks. It is left to be seen whether these things are really necessary, folks. What evidences do we have? What proofs do we have that these things are necessary, what we are doing? Is it a trial and fail situation, folks? Are we forced into something that has taken away our rights and privileges and become absolutely unnecessary, but just because of fear? But folks, one thing that is necessary, unless you do not repent, you will likewise perish, Jesus said. But we do not fear that. We fear man. Then rather we fear God. Isn't that, folks, a tragedy? I tell you it is. Amen. The glory and the power of men, however, it is short labor. I want you to understand that. They are like the flower of the field. Today is, and it is gone. All the celebrities that we have today that people call idols and they worship them, folks. Um, I tell you, they will be gone. All these great men of power and might, uh, folks, uh, will be gone. They're only here on the scene for just a little moment. Um, they will soon stand before God to be judged. All of them, every one of them, would stand to give God an account. Um, how they rule, folks, um, whether the ruler uh, was one of righteousness or one of oppression, they will stand before the Lord uh, and give God uh, an account. Uh, the power of men can do absolutely nothing to save on that day. Absolutely nothing. If you're looking for man to save you, you're looking to the wrong person. The only one who can save you tonight is Jesus Christ uh, and him and him alone. Give him praise, somebody. Today we live for ourselves, giving no thought at all about eternity, giving no time about eternal retribution. We just live as we please. We do about what comes in our mind. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You will come to that place to realize, folks, that God is true and every man be a liar, the Bible tells us so. Amen. Dr. David Barrett, editor of the World Christian Encyclopedia, has documented that Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, and most of you would know of this man, was responsible for the killing of over 40 million people. That's a lot of people. That's 40 times the population that we have in this dot on the world map, somebody. 40 million persons. Joseph Stalin closed down over 40,000 churches. Incredible. Incredible today. Oh, the devil loves what is happening. He's having a field day today, folks. Churches are being closed down. Hello, somebody. Oh, I tell you. Folks, and this is supposed to be a great concern to the church. And when you see the freedom of worship is taken away, we are in dire trouble, somebody. 
we need to repent and turn to the Lord. 48,000 churches were closed. What a celebration for the devil's problem, I tell you. What a celebration for man to close the churches and an attempted liquidation of the entire Christian church. This man wanted to wipe out Christianity as it was. That was his intention. So evil it was, folks. Uh, I, I tell you, wow. If power could have delivered from fear, then Joseph Stalin would have been fearless. Instead, the infamous Russian premier was afraid to go to bed. Just imagine that. This man killed 40 million people, closed off 48,000 churches, but the man was afraid to go to bed. It says so much about the power of man, somebody. It says so much about the glory of man. Afraid to sleep. He had seven different bedrooms. Could you imagine that? Seven different bedrooms for one man. Some of you here tonight, I tell you, a number of you are crowded into one bedroom. But this man, wow, he had seven different bedrooms. Why? Why? Did he like sleeping folks in different rooms every night? No, it's because the man was scared. The man was fearful. So he slept in different bedrooms. Each could be locked tightly as a safe. Yes, in order to foil any of his would-be assassins. So because of that, he said, I will change rooms because if they think I'm sleeping in this room tonight, I'll be in the other room. <laughs> and so he kept on doing that because of, of fear. Mm -hmm. Five, not only that, he had five chauffeurs that drove his limousines that transported him wherever he went. Each with curtains closed so that um, no one will know which one he was in. So identical folks, uh, the man was scared to death. When you see somebody driving on with five uh, uh, limousines, or you see somebody with five Prados, uh, it's not that they have the money to buy it, you know, it's that they're so scared. Folks, that they just want to just, you know, mislead others at which one they might be in. What a terrible way to live, folks. A man that had so much power. But folks, he was a slave to something that was bigger than him. And that was fear. Isn't it sad today, folks? I tell you, he had so much power. But he did not have the power to deliver himself. He did not have the power to make himself better. He did not have the power to heal himself. The only one, folks, that could have done it for him, he rejected it. The only one that could have healed him, he hated him so much. And it is not any different today. The only one that could save this world is Jesus Christ. And yet the masses reject Christ. And the masses reject his rule. Just as the crowd shouted on that day when Jesus stood before Pilate. And Pilate said, I find this man innocent. This man has done him wrong. Yet the crowd shouted, away with this man. Away with this man. Give us a murderer. Give us a bandit. Give us a thief. Give us a notorious criminal. Give us Barabbas. But they rejected the king of glory. They rejected the sinless one. They rejected the one that could truly save them. It is the same thing today. We are turning to man for salvation, folks. But they are going to disappoint you. And God will see to it that everywhere that people turn today, there will be disappointment. This is what you are seeing happening today. With all the intelligence that we have, all the signs that we have today. Folks, we are powerless to save ourselves. We are still trying to find solutions. Why we are trying to find one, another problem arises. And another problem arises and another problem arises and I want you to know there is no end. It is not going to get better folks because we have trusted in man too long. 
to be our savior and you will see your saviors and you will see the saviors of this world uh, disappointing you you put your confidence and your trust in man and you are going to be disappointed it's time that you learn to put your faith uh, and your trust uh, in god give him praise tonight uh. according to Stalin's daughter, Svetlana, who was at his bedside at 9.50 p.m. on the 5th, Stalin's eyes open with a terrible look, brother. Either mad or angry, full of fear of death, he raised his left hand, pointing upwards, perhaps threateningly, and then death took him. He died, I tell you, being overcome by the thing that he feared the most. And I want to say it today, Christians, because I am concerned what I'm seeing in the church today, folks, that how fear has gripped the church today. The thing that you are afraid most of is the thing that will overcome you. Watch out for that, folks. The thing that you are scared most about is the thing, folks, that will have power over you. Come on. And the thing that will take you. What does our text says? Fear not. God is saying, do not fear. Amen. Praise God. Do not fear. Because I am your God. I am your shield. Today we wear shields. I know suddenly I need to get a shield and what not. And folks, uh, I want to tell you, we have a shield. Praise God. That can really protect us from sin and, and from Satan. Hallelujah. And that is faith. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God wants us to move from a position of fear to a position of faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The child of God need not to fear. There is no reason to fear. I know we are all struggling with fear somebody. But God is saying, listen, there is no reason to fear. What are you afraid of? Perhaps the greatest fear of man today is death. And that is why Jesus came. And that is why Jesus died. Amen. And that is why he rose again. He wanted to show man that you need not to fear death. Because I have crossed the river of death. Praise God. Hallelujah. I am Lord over death. Death has no power over me. Because I am life. I am the resurrection. Praise God. And if you believe in me, you will never die, folks. The Bible is no fear, man. Don't fear sicknesses and diseases that can only destroy his body. Fear God who can destroy both soul and body in everlasting fire. Praise God. Stephen, when he was being stoned to death, the man was calm. It is an amazing, amazing. The man was being put to death by stoning. And yet the man was not screaming. Yet the man was not panicking. He was not governed by fear. But folks, uh, as he was there being stoned, with confidence, uh, he looked up to heaven and the sky is open. And the Bible tells us he saw Jesus standing on the Father's right hand, as if to be saying, Welcome home, my son. Amen. Welcome home, my child. Praise God. You have been faithful. Praise the Lord. I say to you tonight um, that the power to change acts. And the power to change lives. And the power to change this world only comes from one source. And that source is my Savior, Jesus Christ. Give him praise, somebody. Lord to God. If you depend on anything else, you are going to come to disappointment in the end. Major disappointment you are going to come to. Still, because we have learned for so long that we are powerless against the devil, we often tend to believe and to operate like that. Remember I told you the story about the hunting dogs last time? I told you that these hunting dogs were fearless because they would hunt hogs, wild hogs, vicious hogs that had the ability to tear them I mean to put the hurting on them with these terrible sharp horns that these wild hearts had. And the very nature they were powerful beasts. Yet 
These hunting dogs did not fear these hogs at all. They took them on and had no fear. But folks, there was one thing that they were afraid of. What was that? They were afraid of chickens. Why were they afraid of chickens? It is because while they were just pups, they grew up among chickens. And because the chickens were bigger than they, the chickens bullied them around the pen. And so as pups, they were scared of these chickens. Now they have grown up and they have become hunting dogs, big and powerful. They did not fear hogs, but however, they still feared the chickens. Because why? It is because they never got over their fears. What God is telling us, get over your fear. He says, fear nothing. The things that you used to fear before, you have no reason to fear them now. Because I am with you, praise God. You don't have to fear anything. You don't have to fear what man can do unto you. You don't have to fear viruses. You don't have to fear pandemics. You don't have to fear sicknesses. You don't have to fear all these things that the world throws at you because I am with you. They cannot destroy you. The worst that they can do, uh, folks, is that they can hurt you physically. But that's all that they can do. Remember, praise God, that you have eternal life. Remember when you die, that you are going to go to heaven, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Remember there's life beyond the grave, praise God. Remember there's a celestial city waiting for you, amen. Remember the streets of gold. Remember the land of no more sickness and no more disease. So don't worry, praise God. Amen. Folks, if you're trying to save your life, Jesus said, you're going to lose it. I will lose my life, folks, in the service of the Lord. That's why I stand here, praise God. That's why I still do the work of the Lord, COVID and no COVID. I do the work of Jesus, praise God. Amen. I've been through many, many battles in life. Glory to God, and God has given me the strength to go on. Amen. And I'm still standing preaching the gospel of our Savior Jesus. Because folks, I have chosen to lose my life for Christ. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. In service for Him, week in and week out, month in and month out. And you can testify about that. Praise God. For all these years, I've lost myself uh, in the work of the Lord. You know, my only pursuit is the kingdom of God. Uh, has nothing to do with self-praise and self-glory, folks, uh, but all for the honor and for the glory of God. Don't try to save your life, uh, because Jesus said, if you try to save it, uh, you are going to lose it. Uh, remember that, child of God, for those of you who are still operating under fear. If you're trying to save your life, uh, you are surely going to to lose it. But if you lose your life for Christ, amen, you are going to save it. One of the great paradoxes of the Bible. Don't be afraid to lose your life for the Lord. Don't be afraid to lose it in service. Folks, don't be afraid because you'll be well rewarded. Glory to God. At the end, you will have an eternal life. Praise the name of Jesus. So don't be afraid to give yourself to the Lord. Let me know that you die as a soldier with your boots on. Not die as one that is a coward. Hiding behind doors, folks. And hiding behind this. And hiding behind that. Hello, somebody. Praise God. Let the Lord be your shield. One of the great promises that God has given to me. With Psalm 84 and verses 11. For the Lord God is the Son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory and no good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly. Praise God. God told Abraham because Abraham too was faced with fears just as we are facing today and God said, Abraham, I am your exceedingly uh, Genesis 15. I want, I am your exceedingly great reward. Amen. Hallelujah. Look up. Look at the stars. Amen. Number them. Amen. Canyon, I will make your seed as the stars of heaven. Praise God. I am your reward, not man. Do not look to man for your reward, folks. I tell you, you're going to be disappointed. Because man may not reward you for the work that you have done.
But do not worry, fools, sir. Let God be your reward. Amen. Salahi. Thank you, Jesus. Let God honor your work. Let God honor what you have done. Praise God. Do not look, folks, uh, for some praise and some glory. What you are doing for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You have your reward. Continue. We have such wonderful people at Power and Science that work so hard behind the scenes. Amen. Doing good things for the kingdom of God. Without uh, no glory, without no recognition, because they know why their reward is not from man, their reward is from God. Amen. He is their exceedingly great reward. God will reward you, my brother, my sister. Amen. Do not be weary in well doing. Do not faint and do not give up. God will reward you in time. Amen. Somebody, thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of us can easily identify with the story of little Johnny, a five-year-old boy. And so Johnny was in the kitchen as his mother was preparing supper. So she asked him to go into the pantry and to get her a can of tomato soup. But he didn't want to go in alone because Johnny was scared as many five-year-olds. So he complained to his mother, he said, Mom, it is dark in there. I don't want to go. Mom, I am scared. I don't want to go. So she asked him again. And still, he complained about going in the pantry. Finally, his mom got an idea and said to Johnny, It's okay, Johnny. You don't have to be afraid of the dark. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be afraid of going to the pantry because Jesus is going to be with you. Well, Johnny walked hesitantly to the door and barely opened the door of that pantry very slowly. And he peeked inside and he did see it was dark and he started to leave. But all at once he had a bright idea. He said, Jesus, if you are in there, would you hand me a can of tomato soup? I like him, praise the Lord. <laughs> he is a bright boy, glory to God. The next time you feel fear coming on, folks, uh, come on. You call on Jesus, praise the Lord. Call on Jesus, amen. Not if you are there. I know you are there. <laughs> amen. He said he's going to be there. He said, listen, I will never leave you and I never forsake you, amen. I'll be there with you to the end of this world. Jesus promises that. So what do we have to really fear? But then there's another story about little Susie. One summer night during a severe thunderstorm, a mother was tucking little Susie into bed, and the mother was about to turn out the light. When Susie asked in a trembling voice, Mommy, would you stay with me tonight? Smiling, the mother gave her a warm, reassuring hug and said tenderly, I would love to, but I can't, my dear, because I have to sleep in daddy's room. So there was a long silence that followed her after mom walked out and turned the light off. At last, the silence was broken by a small, shaky voice, and she replied, the big sissy. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Why does mom have to stay with daddy when she could stay with me? Is daddy so afraid? <laughs> Sometimes folks, adults, have fears as well as children. Sometimes they even have worse fears than children. You see, the things that children have learned to fear has changed in recent years. For instance, uh, researchers at Johns Hopkins University reported three decades ago or so that the greatest fears of primary school children were number one animals. Yes, a simple thing as animals. Then being afraid in a dark room or to be in a dark room was another fear of these little children. Some were afraid of high places. Others were afraid of strangers. And then some were afraid of loud, loud noises. But things have drastically changed after three decades. Have they, folks? 
What are children afraid of today? Well, I will tell you, in this study, now children are afraid of divorce. Look how times have changed. Because in the last 30 years, folks, uh, divorce has escalated in an unprecedented scale. So much marriages are ending in the divorce. So much broken homes today. So much separations today. What are children afraid of? No longer animals or being in the dark room. Children are afraid of their parents uh, ending it uh, in divorce. What will happen to them? Where will they go? How are they going to fare? How are they going to make it? Uh, not only divorce, uh, but these children are afraid now of war, of nuclear war. That is what is going on in the lives of our children today. This is how they are living. Because we are living in a world of violence. We are living in a world of hate. We are living in a world of murder. We are living in a world of criminal activities. And that's what our children are afraid of today, folks. Maybe that is why they are so afraid to go outside because little of our children now go outside and to play any games that we used to play when we were growing up, little boys and little girls. All the time, every chance we got, we were in that yard. We were in the neighbor's yard. We were in the cousin yard. We were playing marbles. We were playing cops and rubbers. We were out there playing football and out there playing cricket. In the middle of the road, we'd be playing cricket, folks. We were having a great time. We weren't afraid of anything. But now our kids are so afraid of going outside. Even we as parents are so afraid of them. So we have them shut in. We lock our gates, we look at them closely, where are they? We miss them for a second, and we are in panic, where are they? I'm not seeing them, I'm not hearing them. And so we now are in a state, because we are afraid of what could happen to our children. Because there are people out there, wicked people, that are waiting to kidnap our children, folks, and to sell them as packs of body. And look at the child molestation is growing, folks. Uh, so many other pandemics rather than just uh, the coronavirus that is out there. This is how our children are living today. Our children are living in fear of diseases, of cancers uh, that they have seen that are killing off um, uh, their, their loved ones today. This uh, is the, these are the things that they are afraid of. Um, they are afraid of pollution. Uh, our world is more polluted uh, than it ever has been today. The air that we breathe is so contaminated. Uh, no wonder why some people are, have wheezing problems. Uh, no wonder why some people have breathing problems, folks. Uh, our air is so nasty, so polluted, folks. Uh, I tell you, uh, these are the things uh, that our children are being afraid of, uh, being afraid of being mocked, uh, afraid of being kidnapped. Uh, look at what is happening today in our world but thank God that God has encouraged us today folks and God says that I will keep you I will protect you in this world that you are living in be a good chair Jesus said because I have overcome the world give him praise thank you Jesus in closing tonight Isaiah chapter 41 and verses 10 Read with me in closing these words again. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Bow with me in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. Fear is real, it's not imaginary. There's a spirit of fear that has gripped planet Earth, immobilized so many people, paralyzed so many people. So many have become stagnated, even in their walk with Christ. So many are afraid now even to come to church, their Lord, because of a paralyzing fear. But this is not where you want us to be. This is not who you want us to be, dear Lord. You want us to rise above um, 
the spirit of fear and to live in confidence and in assurance and to know that God has my back and to know that what the word of God says in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25 and you shall serve the Lord your God for when you serve the Lord your God he will bless your bread and he will bless your water and he will take sickness away from the midst of thee and the number of thy days will fulfill you said you will put none of the diseases amen that were upon the Egyptians upon your people because Lord you will distinguish your people praise God from the people of this world glory to God amen the plague was not meant for the believers that plague that came upon Egypt was not meant for the Jews it was not meant for the children of God. It was not meant for those that feared the Lord. It was not meant for those that were walking with God. It was meant for rebellious Egypt. It was meant, meant for a Pharaoh that had was so hard, hard and wicked that he oppressed the people for years and years. It was meant to show them that who God was. That all the gods of Egypt were just idols. But there was and there is a true one, a living God. They worship nature. But the plagues would show them that the God of Israel is the God that made nature. Amen. Why worship nature when the God of Israel made nature? And so their Lord, Egypt will learn who the true and living God is. Father, I know that you are sending a message again to this world. This world has turned its back on God for too long. Too long, too long, too long. They have been trusted in the saviors of this world. They have been trusted in medicine. They have been trusted in science. They have been trusted in education. They have been trusting in their wealth. They have been trusting in their power. And they have not trusted in God. And so God will bring all these idols down to their knees uh, and show them that they will be powerless to save you in the time that you need their most. Only God can save them. I pray, Father, that the eyes of the people will be open and even the Christian church today, that we will see a bigger picture. We will see beyond physical masses and beyond uh, their Lord hand sanitizers. Uh, we will see the Lord beyond all those things and know that these things must come to pass because the Lord is about to come. Keep us until then, dear Father. Keep us. You know we are living in a moral flesh. Father, you know that we have needs as well. You know we have need of food and clothing and shelter. We have need of health and strength, the Lord. You said you don't worry about them. You just seek God's kingdom first and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added. We thank you, dear Lord. Help us. Even some of us are struggling with faith. But like that man that came to Jesus with that son that was tormented, 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 tormented. Jesus said, I tell you, have faith. He said, Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief, O oh God. Maybe there's some crying out in the same thing, Lord. I'm lacking in this area so badly. I know it's not a lack of faith. It's a lack of exercising our faith. Because we have been given the measure of faith. It's there. We just got to exercise it. Now it's time to exercise our faith. Now it's time, dear Lord, to shine the light. And let the people know that we are not living in fear as children of God. Hallelujah. Let the people know that we will continue to serve the Lord. We will not back down. But we'll be faithful, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By this will men know that we are truly Jesus' disciples. Father, thank you for hearing that prayer night and our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a good hand to God. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God as we're getting ready to come to tonight's collection. Uh, we encourage you to tune in the Lord Tarry. Wednesday evening will be our next live broadcast on our prayer meeting. And we encourage the prayer soldiers to come out. Folks, we need the prayer soldiers more than ever.
these are last days now. Come out and seek the face of the Lord. This Sunday morning, it's the first Sunday in the new month, the month of May, and so we are sending around the table of the Lord, and we're looking forward to it, especially all those who are baptized recently. Praise God, do not miss the Lord's table. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we stand? Praise God. Amen. Anita, would you, would you just lead us in prayer? Good evening, everybody. All right, God's going to see you all by the same offering. Bless God. 